Why do stars fall from the sky? Welcome to another episode of The Real Paw Show, where artists share their heart about their passion for what they do. Take a moment to look over the episode's description to familiarize yourself with available links as they will be mentioned throughout the podcast. And now, here's your host, Paul Weiss. Come true, so they sprinkle moon dust in your hair. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on other listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Hey, y'all, and welcome to another episode of The Real Paul Show. Before we head into this interview, I have some really exciting news. The Real Paul Show now has an official forum. All you have to do is go to the link that's in the description of this podcast. If you're having difficulty finding that, it's really simple. It's trps.us forward slash forum. That web address again, it's the initials of The Real Paul Show. So it's trps.us forward slash forum. And on this forum, you will be able to communicate with the staff of The Real Paul Show. You'll be able to communicate with the interviewees of The Real Paul Show. And on top of that, I even programmed in yet another little cool feature. Throughout the shows, from this point forward, you'll hear me mention a keyword. Now, what keywords are, if you remember back in the day of AOL, they used to have a little bar at the top that would have a keyword you could put in there and it would take you to a website or some feature on the internet. So I have adopted that idea for the Real Paul Show podcast. It's a lot easier than giving out a really long web address. I can just give you guys a single word or a phrase and you type that into the keyword box and it'll jump you directly to the link that we were talking about. Okay, I've done enough talking and it's time to move forward. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening and thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Be sure and like, follow, and rate the podcast on whatever podcast app you use to listen to us on. This helps us to get out there and be seen by others that haven't had the chance to see us yet. So now, without any further ado, Brian, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Brian Green. I'm from Long Island, New York, born and raised. Um, I raised a family there. Uh, And when I got sick and tired of snow in New York, I moved down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So that's basically the short version. What drew you to music? What was your inspiration to get started into music, either listening or playing or both? You can go into both if you want. Well, my my mother always had the radio on. It was music. Um, My mother was an amateur singer. She was enticed into going professional, but uh, she was a teenager and her her mother didn't want her to, you know, because it was back in the 40s when the big bands were guys and they traveled, you know, all together. And my mother was a very good looking woman, so she wasn't going to travel with 17 guys on a train. But uh, that's but that's uh, was her history. She would sing at uh, Kate of the Fairs receptions and I would hear her sing. And her maiden name is 
klezmer, which is Yiddish for strolling musician. Her father was a musician. And so music was in my, is in my blood. My middle brother, Robert, the one who's autistic, who I take care of, took piano lessons and he could play classical. He could sight read. Now he can't. Uh, my oldest brother, Neil, went to college in the city and he used to do piano bar stuff and he used to put his own spin and he would buy music books. When I was 10 years old, I looked at Beatles music books and saw the guitar tabs and I'm like, oh, what's that note? What's that note? And I taught myself chords. I took piano lessons for a year and a half. I lost interest in that. Uh, a few years later, when I was 14, I started composing my own songs and I started adding lyrics and I entered an American songwriting contest in 1975. Didn't even get an honorable mention, but it's 20,000 entries probably. After that, I would just listen to pop songs that I play by ear. And I just enjoyed pop music, all kinds of music listening to, but basically the simple stuff like the pop uh, ballads and whatnot, and maybe some R&B. That's basically what's got me started. Okay, awesome. And what what about the music that, like you, you mentioned the pop and the R&B and the, the music being in the family. So what about that? What specifically was like the aha moment of, you know what, I like this. I want to do this. Well, I would I was very, very shy as a teenager, and I didn't have many friends. And one of my friends brought me to a party, a house party. I knew nobody except the guy who brought me. And I was in the basement, and I'm drinking. And then I go upstairs to this living room, and there's a, a baby grand piano. And I sat down at the grand piano. Music drew people to me. I didn't have to talk to them. The music spoke for me. So it was it was an icebreaker. It was, and so that worked for me. Unfortunately, the teenage girls who came with their boyfriends, the boyfriends were jealous. I wasn't the one getting beaten up. My friend who brought me was the one getting beaten up. So I know it's I know it's not funny now. I mean, it's not funny then. But you know what? I think back and it's like, wow. But yeah, music um draws people together when i when i went on the first date um when i picked up i went to my ex-wife's house uh where her parents were and it was a big hurricane and her sisters and their families had to stay at this house i went to pick her up and i walked in and i saw to the left of me all these strangers now i'm a shy guy and to the right of me i saw a piano i sat down at the piano i didn't have to face them <laughs> so that was my saving grace so it was kind of like would either shield me from people or bring people together but they liked my playing so it, it worked out well and my and and darlene took her sweet time getting ready <laughs> i've played a while that's awesome i you know i hear that a lot like that music is a way to verbalize what we cannot verbalize and it sounds to me like it was something that kind of helped draw you out of your shell. Yes, because I'm a very shy person. And at my place of worship years ago, I walked in, I said, I have a CD. Uh, I wasn't looking to do anything, but they said, oh, can you play piano? I go, yeah. And next thing I know, they called me a leader. They called me a worship leader. I'm like, no, wait a minute. Uh, no, I'm, I'm the leader. You back the wrong horse here. I am no leader. I am a follower. No, you are a leader. So it's like, okay, fine. So I had to accept. I had to accept my fate. And yeah, so okay. it drew people. You know, see me up in New York. I would sing in coffee houses and at churches. People would come up, and I recorded a CD called "The Strength." It came out in two thousand nine. It got some airplay on a local Christian station up on Long Island. Not a lot. Haven't seen royalties, but that's okay. The thing is that people would come up to me and they would say, oh, I saw you I saw you sing at such and such a place. And I would feel so embarrassed because I'd want to remember their name. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't recall your name. And someone told me, said, never say that to anybody. Just say, thank you very much. You know, because people, because hundreds of people saw me. And they and they would come up to me and it would be like, 
Thank you very much. It's that simple. This episode is brought to you by The Shop. Are you wanting a haircut, trim, or just a fresh new look in general? Look no further than The Shop. Located in Lehigh Acres, Florida, their friendly and chill atmosphere makes you feel right at home while getting your favorite hairstyle that suits you. Check them out on Google today, that's D-A-S-H-O-P, for more information and see what they can do for you. The Shop is a proud supporter of The Real Paul Show. We now return you to the interview. Uh, so I got to interact with a lot of people on TikTok. I get to inter- interact with a lot of people. I've done 196 lives, okay, all the years that I've played. Up in New York, I didn't play. I sang to my tracks because I didn't have a band. But uh, down here, I play at my place of worship. Uh, so I've been playing for seven, uh, six years there. And on TikTok, we've been doing all the lives. So I've gotten the experience. And that's, you know, drawn me out of my shell. Okay, that's cool. So we know it draws you out of your shell. But what is it that music does that does that for you? It, it lifts me up. It expresses, I mean, if I have a mood, uh, as a teenager, I was, I'm a hopeless romantic and I had my heart broken. I would write songs from pain. I would write songs from joy. And it it was cathartic. I mean, some songs and even my father, who was not musical, uh, who passed 20 years ago, uh, suddenly asked me to actually get Harry Chapin CD record Cats in the Cradle on a CD to give to my oldest brother who was a workaholic uh, and into his lifestyle, his jet set lifestyle. And so the thing is that my, my father actually did something. He requested something unexpected. He wanted to use music. In all the years I knew him, he never used music. So I got, I got that revelation. And it's a tool. Music is a tool. I'm a scientist by trade, an information scientist. I love the art of music. I love the science of music because it's mathematical. Because every every chord, I mean, every dyad, tri- it's mathematical, it's musical, it's magical. Music is magical, okay? Music can create a mood from nothing. When my CD was released and people got it, people would come up to me and say, oh, my mother loved that song. Even way before I recorded the CD, when I was 21, I went to a stranger's house, a New Year's Eve party, okay, in the basement. I knew a couple of people. Go upstairs, there's an organ. They had an aunt sitting on the couch, stern. She never smiles. She never smiles. I started playing. The woman smiled. I mean, I I think that I was 21 years old. It was 1982. I think at that moment, I realized that I had a gift that I could make people smile. So that is awesome, man. Oh, wow. I'm getting chills. <laughs> that it, Music is very powerful. I mean, it encapsulates like I said, I mean, I, I keep hitting on on every single podcast and it's a phrase that I use. And I know that my listeners are probably going to get sick of this. Oh, he's going to say it again. But music says what words cannot. I mean, it's just it's such a powerful phrase to explain a powerful magic that music has. And and I am not a lyricist. Lyrics don't come easy to me. OK, the music, the music does. OK, I, t- I took a Christian songwriting workshop granted i had already written dozens of songs but i thought it would be fun because it was given by a friend of mine up in new york i had the music running through my head the 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 final assignment was you got to write a song and perform it okay that's piece of cake but i'm like with the music and i'm like but i had no words Mm -hmm. i opened up the bible and i read contiguously i come to psalm 78 and it's like I don't know, I awoke from a sleep and I'm reading these words. And I'm like, wow, this tells a story. And I put it into my music. And I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. 
That's okay. awesome. When I, because I, I was panicking and I was like, oh, this is due. next week. I got seven days to go. I got six days to go. I got five days to go. <laughs> you know, right, I, right. So I have no words. Three days to go. I had words. My CD, The Strength, was mm-hmm. actually recorded in a professional studio, but he was a friend of mine who built the studio, 65 year old man who went to school for recording engineering, built the studio in a converted garage. He retired. His wife owns her own company. They had the capital to finance this, okay? And he recorded it. It was very reasonable for me. Uh, We had musicians come in to play guitar, drums. I became friends with the guitarist. And so I learned a lot from him. Now, the funny thing is that after The Strength came out in 2009, I was just like the floodgates. I was writing, and I'm like... You know what? I don't know if I have the capital to go to my friend's studio again. I don't know when the next CD is good. People kept asking me the first CD came, when's the next one coming out? When's the next one coming yeah, out? Yeah. I, it. I just released this one. <laughs> I started recording. That's when I started taking meticulous records in the basement. People were coming to me. Actually, a friend came to me in 2013 saying they wanted to record. They bought the same equipment, but it overwhelmed them. And so they returned it. And, I was, and But they looked at my basement and was like, I can't spend time down here singing and playing. Uh, it's a health hazard. So shortly after that, I was doing something and, and I fried my equipment. I think I, I think I pulled out a card while it was on or something like that. But I do have demos and accompaniments. And with the exception of one song, I don't have the vocals for one song. Done. The twelfth song in the second volume. If you'd like to record a question or comment to possibly be aired on a future podcast, just click the message link in the description of this episode, or visit the Real Paul Show podcast on Anchor FM. Just another brief method for you to leave a voice comment to be aired on the show? Just simply call 561-342-1761. That number again is 571-342-1761. Where do you see the music taking you, or where would you like it to take you? I think... My purpose is for to just keep on doing what I'm doing, doing the lives, and that's it. I have a desire that people, that famous people record my songs. I actually had the the privilege of spending some time with Tanya Tucker 40 years ago. Time doesn't permit me to go into the whole story. But anyway, yes, I write a song, love song, and I picture like, Kenny, at the time Kenny was alive, Kenny Rogers singing it. That's what I envision. I envision that someday one of my songs is heard by some. Maybe it'll be used in a movie. That's right. a big market. Movie music and, and also commercial ads is a big market too. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are like 80 year old songs that are listed blues songs and that some, you know, fast food chains will be like, oh, we want that. And then they pay like mega bucks to the grandson of the composer, yeah. you know. Yeah. But so, yeah, that's that's how I envision it, that yeah. somebody's going to recognize it and going to want to use it for something. But me, I'm not going to be famous. OK, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go viral. I realize that I accept that. I'm just but you don't know that. You I don't know, know that and if it happens, that's great. But if it doesn't happen, that's great. OK, right. That's that's all. That's all I wanted to hear from you. I didn't want I, I didn't want to end it in that sentence of like. You know, it's not going to happen. It can. And and you never know what God has in store for you, you exactly. know. And the the biggest thing for for me and my music that I'm right there with you is I was just talking to the choir director today and I said, you know, I don't necessarily care to be famous myself, but I would just love it if one of my songs could exist beyond my death, if just one. If just one song could exist beyond my death and be something that people love, because we have classical composers, their music 
is still used today in movies, in ads, in everything. I want something like that, that I can leave some kind of legacy behind, that not necessarily that my name would be such a big thing, but that the music would be so powerful, it touches people's hearts, even after I'm gone. Yes, exactly. Were there other interesting or famous people that you have met that you would like to mention? I didn't meet him, but I did security for Rick Springfield 40 years ago uh, at a small venue. And be and backstage was really a catwalk. He passed right in front of my face, literally in front of my face. So that's that's about it. Other other celebrities, uh, a local celebrity on Long Island. There was a band called the Good Rats. They got radio airplay, but they would piss off record company people, so they weren't getting promoted. But they had a huge following. I saw them after the fact, twenty years, because one of my coworkers was friends with. Uh, one of the guys, Pepe Marcello of the Good Rats, and they were playing a club, and I was like in awe. I said, I grew up with you. I said, in my teens and in my 20s, I mean, you. I would hear you on the radio. I mean, I went fanboy on this guy. <laughs> Going fanboy. So I could local local celebrities. I met country music artists there was in on long island at a small venue there was a promo wade hayes who's hit number one of the country charts back in the 90s late 90s i met him he signed my daughter's britches as he put it and then there was a, a canadian country artist lisa brokaw with him who i met uh Lori morgan was doing a, a cd signing on long island in 1997 i met her i waited in line for an hour and a half not much talk there because it's like, it's like, what's your name, Brian? Okay, to love from Lori with love to Brian. Move along. I think I think that's it. People on my lives when they request, so they ask me, oh, do you do Pink Floyd? Can you sing Bohemian Rhapsody? And can you do whenever I call you friend? I'm like, well, I don't pursue those songs for a reason. Number one, I don't have Freddie Mercury's range. Forty five years ago. I used to sing in the privacy of my own home, Bohemian Rhapsody, but they're a four-part harmony song. And my voice isn't as high as it used to be. People ask me to do harder stuff. One of my TikTok friends, my TikTok sister, Kim, her husband's on Instagram, and he's a guitarist. And he says, yeah, he, he used to have a, a Barry Manilow dartboard, but his, his inspiration came from the darker side. I said, I listen to it all, but mm -hmm. ACD. In Metallica, don't translate well to a piano. Right, right. Because you know? people make comments about Pink Floyd. It's not in my wheelhouse. Uh, I love Pink Floyd. I'm not inclined to start playing Breathe. It's Elton John and Jackson Brown and Barry Manilow that I'm inclined to play. Yeah, and um, who is it? Uh, Alenka Cello. It's a lady that I follow on TikTok who plays the cello. And she plays like heavy metal stuff on her cello. Yes. Really, really awesome. Have you seen her? No, I, I can't to share her. It, please, please share. But Pandora, I listen to Pandora and I'm very explorative on Pandora. Mm -hmm. And they actually the piano guys and they do you know, you know, you got you got a string quartet doing cold play, you know? Yeah. So, and yeah, that's what, that what a piano and a cello. Yeah, what I was gonna say is with Alenka Cello, she has the same issue with what you just said a few minutes ago like some things just don't translate over yeah i think i've seen i think i've seen her yeah okay. yeah she's she's pretty big on tiktok she's also she multi-streams she'll be streaming on tiktok instagram facebook twitch reddit and she does like all five at once and She'll get all kinds of requests, but she'll be like, I don't know. And she'll tell them, though. She'll be like, I don't know that one, but I'll look it up. But yeah. there are some that she'll just flat out say it, it doesn't translate well to cello. And there's just some music like that. If you enjoyed what you heard here, please consider supporting the podcast with a monthly contribution. So contribute. Just click the link in the description of this episode or visit The Real Paw Show on Anchor FM.
I'd like to say a thank you for my contributors, and I would like to welcome you guys to contribute as well. You can click the link in the description of this podcast and donate one, five, or ten dollars a month. You can also do a one-time donation by going to trps.us forward slash podcast. And I have on there available for you to donate on Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo. Thanks in advance for your contribution. Music opens opens doors. I made a little money. I was in a uh, bar band 30 years ago, but oh, I was really? a keyboardist. They lost their keyboardist. It's a local band. And, you know, it was, it was classic rock. You know, Bach Maternal Overdrive, Billy Idol. I was only there for a couple of months. The front man didn't like the fact that I couldn't play Miami 2017, which has 64th notes. And I felt heartbroken. When I was kicked out of the band, I was never really in, but it was kind of like it was a high, you know, mm-hmm. playing in front of an audience is a high. It's yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. It's it's basically that you get all nervous before you go up and play and then you get up there and you're you're in the zone and you feel it. 15, 10, 15 years ago, I used to get stage fright. I really yeah. did. Now when I do the lives, I mean, yeah, I'm not in front of I'm in front of an audience, people, friends, but not. You know, not like in front of live people. And yeah. and the opposite's true. I've seen people sleeping in the York. <laughs> and I don't get insulted. I'm like, good, let them get some rest. Right. People make make comments on, oh good, I'm in time for you to put me to sleep. I said, Okay, that's cool. I'll play <laughs> something mellow, you know, which is usually what I do. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna see me, you know, banging out some uh, ZZ top. Right. All know. right. Well, you know what? Let me let me ask this one last question here. Tell us a little bit about your lives. Like, how did you how did you start getting into TikTok? And and was TikTok, were you getting into TikTok specifically for your music to go live? Or did that just kind of happen? And then tell us about your lives and how you feel about those. Well, about a couple of years ago, my wife was looking at this app and she was um, laughing and I'd look over her shoulder and she would be like, it's TikTok. If you want to, if you want to see it, download it. So I downloaded it. It was my daughter who got her into it. I was, didn't know what I wanted to do with it. I'll just play the piano. So she produced my first TikTok. I was playing the piano in the backyard, but I had no clue. I hadn't had another TikTok, I think two or three months because I was like, I can't play. I don't have enough material to play, enough copyrighted material to play uh, originals. And then I started sinking. And it's like, people were like, well, you play piano. Why don't you just play piano? And then last year, March, I started doing cover um, cover versions. But I'm like, you can't really do a whole song. I know it's three minutes now. But people aren't going to watch a three-minute video. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, that's why I just do snippets. That's how... That's how it snowballed. It was uh, Michelle Pacone, too, said, let me do um, a duet. And she showed me a guy who does songs, puts the lyrics up in different colors. You sing this. I sing this part. We sing this part. Um, and that's got the whole ball rolling. And I do the I was doing the morning greetings. And then I added a question. Somebody said, stop doing TikToks in your car. So I did it by water features because there are plenty of water features in Myrtle Beach. Uh, I was, and so that's how it evolved. People would say, "Why don't you do this or stop doing that?" You know, and that's that's what, how my library, my content evolved. I have over four. I I've privatized about fifty videos, but not counting those, I have over five hundred videos. Wow. So, okay, you had TikTok, you started snowballing the stuff, you started getting more followers and more followers. Once you hit a thousand and you could go live, what happened? October, my first live tank, I had no nothing prepared, no material. I could only do two songs, I think. Your song was one of those songs. I th- and I think one of my originals is it all for the is it all for the best. So that's that's what I did, and my neighbor across the street requested, and I I didn't I didn't know I had no sheets, no nothing, no lyrics, 
And but I was prepared for the second one. And then people started coming in more and more people. I mean, if I had, I think 20 people is the most I've ever had. But it's not about the numbers. No, because I can't play and sing and look at the at the comments at the same time. Right. Um, eludes me. So I got moderators. I do a, a throwaway song. My first song's a throwaway song for people to come in. And then people come in and they talk to them. They, they actually interact. That's what it's about. It's about people interacting with people. Okay. I would love to interact with the people on my live, but while I'm playing the song, I can't. Now, right. so it, it kind of ends up being like a, like a coffee shop, like well, a coffee well, shop with a band. Yeah, coffee. Yeah, people. Yeah, I've gone to wine and cheese places where I've been. I haven't played, but but people are talking. And in the coffee, in the coffee houses, too, that I've played, too. People are like, you know, and and that's the nature of it. Hey, Brian, right now would be a great time to tell us when your lives are so that we can come and listen. Right now. My regular times are Monday and Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I have to say Eastern. Uh, and possibly, maybe, depending upon my mood, I may do a pop-up. It may be Friday night. It may be Saturday night. It may be Sunday. So if it's a pop-up, I really don't know when. Right. Uh, you know, so it would be a good idea for people to just follow you and make sure that they hit that notification bell so that they get the notifications of when you go live. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. That's easy enough for people to do. You, you hit on that one point, too, that I think it's very important to stress. It's been mentioned many times in my podcast already. It's not about the numbers. It's it's about you enjoying what you do and being there for people to listen. And you share it. You share that intimate moment between you and your music. And the the way I see it is no matter the size, the number of people, it's about the connection and the people that are there are the are the golden ones. Yeah, I mean, I and the thing is that I've had a stream of regulars and then I get more friends and there would be a different stream of regulars. And I'm happy to say that if everyone who's been in my life ever showed up at once, I would be overwhelmed. If I have more than seven people, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> All right. It's, it's like, well, who's in here? I, I go through and I scroll back. I'm like, who did, if I didn't welcome, give you a proper welcome in, um, I apologize, but I want to give you a proper welcome. Oh, you snuck it. This person snuck in. That snuck in. Yeah. yeah. Somebody actually once said, I went into your live, but I left because you didn't acknowledge me. Like, oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. I was playing a song that I really needed to look the lyrics for. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And it's just, it really is about the passion that you put into the music and people see that. That's what I saw in you. That's why I invited you. It's like, there's a passion there for the music and there's all different styles. There's all different variations and there's every person puts their own fingerprint on whatever song they play whether it's a cover or their original their spin their fingerprint is on that and and that is what connects to me because i see the passion i feel the passion because i feel it as a musician myself and i i stop saying that i'm a learning musician because i'm always going to be learning oh yes we we learn every day and i'm at a very i feel like i'm at a very low level as far as being a mus musician I know a lot of editing tricks in audio, so therefore I create these little pieces of music that aren't necessarily anything, and I, I edit it and put it into nature sounds to kind of help fill the space. And I do that because I want to get what I have written out there, but what I have written is so small in length or whatever that I, I feel like I'm jipping people. It's like, eh, this is only 30 seconds long. I used to feel that way about about snippets of music but i thought to myself you know what um that's people uh, tiktokers have told me you know experts quote oh if it's longer than eight seconds then people will lose interest i'm like you can't cram a song even a snippet into eight seconds maybe 40 50. right yeah so yeah 
Okay. And that's that's the thing too is um, I've got a couple of songs that I released. I just I went ahead and said, you know what, I'm I'm not gonna worry about this. I've released songs that are like a minute long or two minutes long. And the funny thing is, I didn't even think about it. But whenever you release stuff through DistroKid, it goes out to all the different platforms like Amazon, uh, Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify. But not only that, it goes to the TikTok library of music. So if you go to TikTok and you type in my name, Paul Bice, that's B-U-I-C-E for anybody listening, you can find my music in the TikTok library to use on your videos. Wow. And since my music was so small, it's perfect. I I think the most innovative and adventurous I've ever gotten on an iPhone is I took the intro to one of my songs, second volume songs, which I considered like kind of hip hop ish, dance ish, and I made it a ringtone. There you go. First, I my first iPhone. Actually, maybe yeah, it was my first iPhone. I was like, wow. And I also thought about uploading, but didn't know how to use my own music as background. You mentioned that service or that app. Distrokid. Yes. I, saw, I think I saw an ad for it. Somewhere. Yeah, DistroKid is awesome. It's uh, for the low end package, it's twenty dollars a year. Wow. I mean that that's pennies on the day, you know. Yeah. Wow. So um, you can get a better package, which would then actually lock in your music. If I don't pay the twenty dollars a year right now, my music will be taken down. My CD was on CD Baby. Okay, it sold one copy in Japan. That's awesome. So at the coffee house, the woman who ran it would introduce me and international recording artist Brian Green. <laughs> right? <laughs> but the thing is, I got the money for it. They sent me a check after a while for it. And I look, I tell people I'm on CD Baby. I give them the link. I give them the, the URL to CD Baby, and it's not there. And they informed me, yeah, they removed it because it wasn't selling. They removed it. Mm -hmm. I even got myself put into a, a bargain bin. If if you're interested in releasing music, you it's, should check out DistroKit because it's it's simple. You know, you just take your MP3, upload it, fill in all the details, hit submit, and within about two to three days, it's out there. Wow, that is fantastic because I have music. I mean, it's on the PC, it's on my phones. My old i5 is not in service, but it's it's a Wi-Fi device. Yeah. I keep both. Well, Brian, if you do that, you got your first fan right here. I'll be following <laughs> you on uh, Spotify. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for being on the show. Well, you're very welcome. And thank you for having me. I enjoyed myself. Awesome. Hey, just a quick reminder before we close out the show. Don't forget about the forum, trps.us forward slash forum. Now, I've included a keyword for this podcast episode for the DistroKid sign up. If you're a beginning musician or a musician who wants to put your work out there and get it out there in the public eye in iTunes, Spotify, all those awesome music platforms, then DistroKid is for you. And if you go to the forum and in the keyword box, type in DK7, that'll give you a 7% discount off of DistroKid. Again, that code is DK7. Check it out. Visit the forum. Leave a comment if you're not interested in doing the DistroKid thing. Leave a comment if you do the DistroKid thing. I really want to get this forum popping and I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the show, what I could improve, what I am doing good with. I want to know what you think. So I'll see you there. I'm waiting for you. Thank you for listening to yet another episode of The Real Paul Show. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss an episode. And remember, do what you love with no regrets.